Good evening and welcome to our service of Celtic Evening Prayer from, very appropriately, St Michael's Chapel in St Gabriel's Church on this uh, festival of St Michael and All Angels. Yes, I know we're a few days late, it was actually on the 29th, but we're, we're doing it on the Sunday as well and we're celebrating um, our patrons, our patron saints who happen to be angels. So we're going to begin by singing a wonderful hymn, Angel Voices Ever Singing, Round Thy Throne of Light. I shall share the words on the screen and uh, play on the show. appropriate um, moment for the, the thing in Wickford that um, I was at on Friday night, some of you were at. Um, Jonathan Evans, the team rector there, has started this um, series of Friday night concerts or art exhibitions or poetry readings and it just occurred to me as we were singing, yes we know that thou rejoicest o'er each work of thine. Thou didst ears and hands and voices for thy praise design, craftsman's art and music's measure, for thy pleasure all combine. So perhaps that should be, um, I'll, I'll tell Jonathan, maybe that should be um, the, oh, I can't think of the right word, of the ad advert, the, the, the promo, um, the motto for what he's doing on a Friday. Anyway, that's by the by. Let's light some candles and... Uh, begin with the blessing of the light.
The Lord is my light and my salvation. My God shall make my darkness to be bright. The light and peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. And blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. So I've just noticed Martin's come into the waiting room. There we are. I'll begin that prayer again. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator of day and night. To you be praise and glory forever. As darkness falls, you renew your promise to reveal among us the light of your presence. By the light of Christ, your living word, dispel the darkness of our hearts, that we may walk as children of light and sing your praise throughout the world. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. Now let's sing. Light of gladness, Lord of glory. Light of gladness, Lord of glory, Jesus Christ, our King most holy, shine among us in your mercy, earth and heaven join their hymn. Let us sing at songs descending as we see the lights of evening. Father, Son, and Spirit praising with the Holy Seraphim. Son of God, through which never shall grow dim. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. O Lord, I call to you, come to me quickly. Hear my voice when I cry to you. Set a watch before my mouth, O Lord, and guard the door of my lips. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let not my heart incline to any evil thing. Let me not be occupied in wickedness with evil doers, but my eyes are turned to you, Lord God, in you I take refuge, do not leave me defenceless. Let my prayer rise before you as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful, let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise, now and forever. Amen. And as we come to our confession, the place of atonement, the place of atonement, some words for today. We have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to myriads of angels, to God, the judge of all, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant. So let us confess our sins. We say together. Give us tears to see the wonder of your presence. Give us tears to see the wasting of your people. Give us tears to see the wounding of your son. We are the race that helped to make the wood on which you were crucified, and still we misuse your creation. We are the race that helped to make the nails that pierce your body, yet still we use work for gain at others' expense. We are the race that did nothing to stop your betrayers, 
yet still we are ruled by comfort or cowardice. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Woe is me, for I am lost. I am a person of unclean lips. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Our guilt is taken away, and our sin is forgiven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Mighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And once again, Chris has agreed to read our readings for this festival of angels. So, Chris, if you would, the Old Testament, that'd be great. Our Old Testament reading this evening is found on page 870 in our Good News Bible. It is from the book of Daniel, verse 12, verses 1 to 4. The time of the end. The angel, wearing linen clothes, said, At that time, the great angel Michael, who guards your people, will appear. Then there will be a time of trouble, the worst since nations first came into existence. When that time comes, all the people of your nation, whose names are written in God's book, will be saved. Many of those who have already died will live again. Some will enjoy eternal life and some will suffer eternal disgrace. The wise leaders will shine with all the brightness of the sky, and those who have taught many people to do what is right will shine like the stars forever. He said to me, and now Daniel, close the book and put a seal on it until the end of the world. Meanwhile, many people will waste their efforts trying to understand what is happening. Here and there. Sorry. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be, Thanks to, God. be to God. I think um, King James has got himself into the system, which is lovely. Um, and of course we will we will return to the authorised version, I think probably at the end of this month, as we have five Sundays. Anyway, um, uh, a song in place of the psalm, and this was um, part of the, the vision in uh, Revelation. And in fact, one of the readings this morning from the Old Testament had this similar picture of, uh, of Jesus in glory. And visions are wonderful in, um, in the Bible because when it comes to visions of heaven, we're seeing angels, we're seeing Jesus um, in all his heavenly glory, we're seeing Jesus on earth as a human, and we're seeing the angels who are preparing for that moment when uh, Jesus is going to return and claim everyone for himself. shared it on screen. I will do so for the benefit of those who may not have the words. Here we go. It's on the, um, oh, I had little note says participants can now see your application. That's the general idea. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, right hand side at your feet would fall. At your feet we fall 
Mighty risen Lord, as we come before your throne to worship you. We'll stop the share before we carry on. Wonderful. Thank you. Now we can see you, Chris. A New Testament reading is found on page 163. It is from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12, and I'm reading verses 1 to 17. Actually, More per sorry. Chris, can you, um, oh no, no, that's absolutely right, sorry, uh, the original passage was only about half of that, and I pushed it on to verse 17 to give it its full context, and I thought I hadn't put that in the notice sheet, but I have, sorry to cut you off, carry on, wonderful, thank you. More persecutions, about this time, King Herod began to persecute some members of the church. He had James, the brother of John, put to death by the sword. When he saw that this pleased the Jews, he went on to arrest Peter. This happened during the time of the festival of unleavened bread. After his arrest, Peter was put in jail where he was handed over to be guarded by four groups of four soldiers each. Herod planned to put him on trial in public after Passover. So Peter was kept in jail, but the people of the church were praying earnestly to God for him. 
Peter is set free from prison. That night, before Herod was going to bring him out to the people, Peter was sleeping between two guards. He was tied with two chains and there were guards on duty at the prison gate. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord stood there and a light shone in the cell. The angel shook Peter by the shoulder, woke him up and said, hurry, get up. At once the chains fell off Peter's hands. Then the angel said, fasten your belt and put on your sandals. Peter did so. And the angel said, put your cloak round you and come with me. Peter followed him out of the prison, not knowing, however, if what the angel was doing was real. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed by the first guard post, then the second, and came at last to the iron gate leading into the city. The gate opened for them by itself and they went out. They walked down the street and suddenly the angel left Peter. Then Peter realised what had happened to him and said, Now I know that it is really true. The Lord sent his angel to rescue me from Herod's power and from everything the Jewish people expected to happen. Aware of his situation, he went to the home of Mary, the mother of John Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outside door and a servant named Rhoda came to answer it. She recognized Peter's voice and was so happy that she ran back in without opening the door and announced that Peter was standing outside. You are mad, they told her. But she insisted it was true. So they answered, it is his angel. Meanwhile, Peter kept on knocking. At last the door, he, at last they opened the door and when they saw him, they were amazed. He motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and explained to them how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell this to James and the rest of the believers, he said. Then he left and went somewhere else. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, we shall think about that story a little bit later. Um, but right now, um, on the altar of service, let's say the Song of Mary, the Magnificat together. And remember, this was um, Mary's response to seeing Gabriel, who announced to her that she was going to have Jesus, the Son of God. She visited her cousin Elizabeth, who was six months pregnant, uh, but barren and very old and was not expected to have children and it was miracle after miracle and when Mary realised just how favoured she'd been she came out with a song of praise let's say it together my soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord my spirit rejoices in God my saviour he has looked with favour on his lowly servant from this day all generations will call me blessed the almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and to scatter the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son 
and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray. Lord of the universe, Lord of earth and sky and sea, Lord of our land, Lord of Pitsy, Lord of Nevenden, we are humbled by your presence amongst us and we turn to you in worship and prayer and we begin with the prayer that you taught us our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the collect of St. Michael and all angels. Everlasting God, you have ordained and constituted the ministries of angels and mortals in a wonderful order. Grant that as your holy angels always serve you in heaven, so at your command they may help and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Light in our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night for the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Celtic ancestors had a way of keeping in touch with the Lord through very earthy and natural things. They would spend more time digging the soil, tending their animals and being connected with our world in a way that sometimes today we're not. I remember um, at the height of the protests that used to run around in the 80s and 90s when people were worried about trees being chopped down and uh, open spaces being enclosed. And one of the um, campaigners was talking to the interviewer from the BBC, I think, and he said to him, when was the last time you took your shoes and socks off and walked through a field of grass and actually felt the earth because actually you're just completely insulated by um, cotton and leather and rubber and concrete and pavements very few people these days touch the earth and it was a very interesting comment and a comment that spoke to me and I thought it's true we need to spend more time connected with our Lord's creation because the church, Christ's body here on earth, um, is not just to be worshipping buildings, but actually be to connect it with people and to be out there on the streets ministering to them. We pray for His Majesty King Charles III and as he takes up his role as defender of the faith. And we're asked to pray this week for the church in Canada, Burundi, Kenya, North India, Southern Africa and Myanmar. And in our own Diocese of Chelmsford, we pray for the Deanery of Whittam, the Right Reverend Roger Morris, the Bishop of Colchester, and the Right Reverend Goody Francis de Juani, the Bishop of Chelmsford. We pray too for those who were confirmed today, um, all the candidates in St Martin's Church, but specifically the ones from this parish. We pray for Jaden and Sue, and Emily, and Simon, and Cheeto. Lord, thank you for their demonstration of faith, and we pray that the Bishop's um, seal of the Holy Spirit on them will strengthen their faith and lead them to continue to follow you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
for our world, especially Ukraine, uh, and the, the tragedy uh, of the terrible things that are happening there. Lord, we pray that sense would reign and peace would come. Just as the angels sang at your birth, peace on earth and goodwill to men. We pray about the uh, hurricane that's trashed Florida and other parts of Southeast North America. We pray too uh, about the floods in Pakistan, the typhoon in Japan, the wildfires in Australia and all the other climate change effects that are destroying people's lives. And uh, we do pray about this summit that's coming up. I know there's been a political row about whether or not King Charles should attend, but Lord, I pray that we put the politics aside and get on with the job of rescuing our planet before it's too late. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For our parish and for individuals, uh, we continue to pray for our restoration in both our churches and for our moving forward to proclaim the good news of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For individuals, our list is very long. Some of these people are sick, some of them are lonely, some of them are isolated, some of them are bereaved. Lord, only you can make a difference to their lives. Only you can speak to them and let them know that you are walking along beside them. But we hold them all in our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for the bereaved, especially for Sharon following the death of her mum Lily and Sylvia McGillivray on the death of her sister-in-law Janet, not forgetting Ken Kent, whose wife Jean died recently and still um, working on the funeral arrangements for that. Lord hear us, Lord graciously hear us. And let's pray for one another and all those whom we've mentioned using the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Now, I'm going to share some more words and we're going to sing some wonderful uh, 19th century rock and roll. Ah, silly me. <laughs> I put the... Do you think, if, if you've got the sheet, maybe you can get the first verse off Pat. Crowned in many crowns, the lamp on his throne. Hark, how the heavenly anthem drowns all music but its own. Awake, my soul, and sing of him who died for thee, and hail him as thy matchless king through all eternity. And then I shall put the other words visible. As I say, I didn't think when I was... Oh, no, I can't quite get the first verse on, on the same page. Sorry about that. OK. Uh, Simon, you might be able to do it with a scroll bar. With? With the scroll bar. If you click on the scroll bar and take it down, you might be able to get it all on one page. What's the scroll bar? So if you grab the black bit beneath that arrow, that last arrow, move it up, we might be. What, this arrow that I'm on now? Oh, right, yeah. Or the that, top one? Yeah. Top one? Try the three, uh, the, the three dots immediately above that, and it might give you a chance to uh, reduce the magnification. Go to the minus. Uh, 
That's okay. almost that. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, you might need um, a magnifying glass to see it, but I I I see what you're saying. That's a good. Oh, oh, nearly, one back up. Yes, I can't get to the 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 um. Try now, now. I putting... can't get to the other one because your pictures are in the way. Right. Try putting okay. the your cursor on on that black bar, that scroll bar, and gently. Lift yeah, it. I can't because your pictures are in the way. Right. Okay. It's, it's masking the scroll bar, so I right. think I, that's almost it. Um, we just lose one line either at the beginning or at the end. Sorry about that. Okay, we'll try. Thanks for the um, advice, but I, I just, at some point, I need to work out how to move you away from. Hang on. One more attempt. I wonder if I can get this in front. If you're watching this on catch up, I do apologise for all the mucking about. But um Oh ah The scroll bar works through the pictures. How about that? Fantastic. Got it all. Not that you can read it because it's so small print, but at least it's all on the screen. And I will Definitely make an attempt. Not to do that next time. Right, here we go. Sorry, need a plexum now. Yeah. 
Now may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. temporarily dropped out but she's come back in now um, ok as you know we have two churches in the parish of Pitsy with Nevendon we have a medieval gem um, about three miles north of here um, behind Sainsbury's hidden away dedicated to St Peter best guesstimate of when the first part of it was built it's probably about 1275. When I first sort of realised that, I, I tried to think, wow, Edward I was on the throne. And, and just to imagine uh, what life must have been like in those medieval times, and the de Bromford family building a church, well, a chapel for them to worship in, and then eventually it becoming a parish church and building a nave so the workers had somewhere to worship. Absolutely amazing. And Peter, what a great evangelist. We've been thinking about him this evening. Then down at this end, where I'm stood now, a 1960s building. Very wacky, very 12-sided, very open, very wonderful. And of course it's dedicated to St Gabriel, the angel who made the Annunciation to Mary. And of course there was a St Gabriel's here before, a Chapel of Ease, when um, Ernest Grevitt bought the old farmhouse next door and used it as his rectory. And of course the main church was St Michael and All Angels up on the hill. Many churches on the top of hills were dedicated to St Michael. So it made sense for the Chapel of Ease to be St Gabriel. And then when uh, the new church was built it was dedicated to St Gabriel. Now I've always tried to link St Gabriel and St Peter's and I think possibly the story from the Acts of the Apostles could be that link. Now as you know it was Michaelmas Day on Thursday, our patronal festival and uh, we've kind of extended it a little bit to Sunday. And the angel who rescues Peter from prison is not named but I rather like to think it was possibly St Gabriel. Obviously Gabriel was very active about that time. He'd been involved in announcing to John the Baptist's dad and to Mary about the forthcoming children coming into the world. Who knows? Well, let's pretend it was. First of all, Peter thinks he's dreaming or at least having a vision of this angel. But then he realises that the angel is real. Perhaps it was Gabriel who came to release him. And he goes from the prison, he's got out, goes straight to where the church is meeting. Now you may have wondered why he says, tell James and all the others what's happened to him, because right at the beginning of the chapter we heard that James, the brother of John, the son of Zebedee, was put to death by Herod. By the way, this is um, the third Herod in the Bible, Herod the Great, whose son, Herod um, Antipas was ruler of Galilee when Jesus was crucified. Now Herod Agrippa I is Herod the Great's grandson, who's now um, the puppet king of the Romans. He's killed James. So who's this other James? Well, it's actually the brother of Jesus. Um, Mary and Joseph had four sons after um, the virgin birth of Jesus and had um, girls as well. We know Jesus had sisters, although they're not named. And the four sons uh, of Joseph and Mary, James, Joseph, Simon and Judah. And uh, James, the eldest, took over the church in Jerusalem at the point at which the original 12 apostles were dispersing and going out um, into the world. There's a very ancient um, apocryphal story 
thing about apocryphal stories um, that just missed getting into the New Testament is often, often a grain of truth in them. And this is um, uh, a story about um, John, the apostle who, as we know, eventually went to Ephesus to minister there. And in this particular story, Jesus says to them, the apostles, don't leave the city for 12 years. Stay there, ministering in Jerusalem and in Israel, and then after 12 years, you will be empowered to go out into the rest of the world. And very significantly, this incident with Peter happened in the year AD 42, which is 12 years from the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus. And there are many scholars who believe that when Peter went somewhere else, he disappeared, he actually went to Rome and began to found the church much earlier than some of the um, historians would think. Obviously he wanted to get out of the way. Um, it was another two years before Herod Agrippa died and so he wanted to keep clear. But by 45 he was back for the Council um, of Jerusalem which, um, sorry, a little bit later of the Council of Jerusalem when they decided about whether or not Christians had to become Jews first. That was in 48. But anyway, um, Peter goes to where the church meets, to Mary, the mother of John Mark. Mark is the one who wrote the Gospel. And it, it, he probably went with Peter, because Mark was Peter's interpreter and wrote the Gospel um, from Peter's words. So significantly, that's the place where Peter went, the upper room where they, the church had been meeting for many, many years. And he knocks at the door. You know, they had a kind of outside door into a courtyard and then into the house. And he's banging on the outside door and Rhoda, the servant girl, hears him and rushes back in to tell the others that Peter's outside. You're mad. Now what's silly is the church has been praying for Peter. They've been praying for his release. And now he's been released, they don't believe it. You must have seen his angel, you must have heard his guardian angel, not Peter himself. But eventually they believe and they let Peter in and he tells them what's happened and says, tell James and the whole church. And then he goes off um, to get away from Herod, but also to proclaim the gospel elsewhere. Now when Rhoda went away and Peter couldn't get in, he said, uh, the narrative tells us that Peter continued knocking. He knocked and knocked and knocked until he was let in. Now, this afternoon we, or well, some of us, went to a confirmation service at St Martin's in the town centre and we saw five people from our parish and uh, six people from other churches being confirmed. Now, when I was confirmed by the Bishop of Barking in 1966 in Walthamstow, the passage at the confirmation service was this passage from Acts of the Apostles when I was confirmed. And the Bishop's text was, Peter continued knocking. And he said to us all being confirmed and to our families and friends, look, you're going through life and you're gonna come against obstacles, keep banging on the door because if you continue and you persevere eventually the door will be opened and the Lord will let you through to do whatever he has called you to do. So it was good for me to remember that today with this reading and sparked off by the confirmation service. Peter was released by the angel, let's say Gabriel. The Lord sent Gabriel to rescue Peter because it wasn't Peter's time to become a martyr. Peter had too much important work to do to proclaim the gospel. Now, none of us know how long, whatever our time is, but what we do know is in the time we've got, the time that's been allotted to us, we must use it for God's glory. And it's also encouraging to know that there will be angels helping us along our way, our guardian angels, maybe even Sir Gabriel, will pay us a visit for a special reason. So Peter and Gabriel, I believe, are connected and it's wonderful that we are connected here in this parish and we must carry on proclaiming the good news.
Jesus has died to take away the sins of the world and he's risen from the dead to give us life. I'm sure that the angels will still be helping us in the same way that Peter was helped before. Amen. Good. Last hymn. I'll find my hymn sheet. Ye holy angels bright who wait at God's right hand. Okay, we probably ought to. Oh, I'm wrong, wrong three dots. There they are. We need to just come up again, I think. But go down. That's it, they're all wrong there I believe. Just um, wonderful to notice when this was written by Richard Baxter, a great um, defender of the faith back in the 17th century who lived 1615 to 1691. Let's rejoice with the angels and sing together. up to meet you. May the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall gently upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand.
blessing of the angels. God keep you in the fellowship of his saints. Christ protect you by the ministry of the angels. The Spirit make you holy in God's service. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always.